Hello, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to talk about props in State and React. These are very, these are two very important properties or objects in React. Uh, first, let's look at a diagram between two components. Um, here, I have the top is a parent component is a class type because it has state, and then down but at the bottom is a child component. I did not specify here. It could be either a child or a function or a class. It doesn't matter in this case. And in between, you have this huge arrow going down from the parent to the child, just to show that arrow uh, going in one direction. That means data flows in one direction from the parent down to the child. Okay, so let's talk about a class component first. Up here, I have a state is um, that is ha that is set to a property called score with a hundred, right? So this state is one property. I also have a function called update state to update the state value when I make some changes down in the child component, and just another message to pass down to the child component. Now, when you pass data from a parent component to a child component, you pass it through a property called props. This is an in invisible property; you don't see it, you don't actually, you know, code it. You just add these properties to a tag, uh, uh, a child component tag, and these will be. Um, added to the props object automatically. So I'm passing all these three properties to this props. The score, these on the left side are just some variables. We call these properties, right? Or if you look at a tag, it would be like attributes. And you can call these whatever you want as long as they're unique and they don't, they don't duplicate. Then you can assign some data to it. So the first one is a score. I'm assigning this score here to this score variable. And notice I put the color braces around here, and this is because uh, when you pass props to the child component, you pass it through its tag, and tag therefore are JSX like uh, like HTML, right? So therefore you have to put the color braces here to uh, interpolate these data. That's why you do here. If it's not in the text in the uh, uh, tag, then you wouldn't need this. So I'm passing the score. Notice that we use the word this, this, this here because all these are in class space. If it's a function, then you won't need the word this, right? Um, so I'm passing the score to the score. And the message here assigned to a new variable called msg. And same thing with update state. I pass to a function, a variable called update. Now this function is important because this is the only way you can update this state data here from any other component outside of this pink, this this own component. Whoever you know created this state owns it. Only you can change it um, directly or indirectly. Only you can change it. Uh, so so you cannot change it uh, outside of it. So in order to change somebody's own state, like the child components want to change it, then you have to find a way for that component to do it. And you do that by passing a function. So this function will be a callback function down here, and then it will. Um, as you can see, when I click the update button, it's going to pass the function through the props object back to this function in the parent component, and then this can update the uh, state. Once the state has been changed or has been touched, then this whole thing gets trickled down again. It goes come back down here, update the view again, and that's it. And this is how React manages state. Okay, and so. Uh, and then in, in, in the child component, you receive this property called props. Now you have to uh, literally put that into your function, either a constructor if it's a class component, or in the function heading head if it's a function component. And then through these props, you can access these data, these properties, using the dot notation. So again, dot msg will give you the message. Uh, props the score give you the score that's passed to it. In this case, a hundred. And then props.update will call this function when you click that button. Okay, so that's how you pass data to a component, and how you can actually pass data back from the component to the the uh, uh, parent to update any state or any other data here. Okay, uh, so I hope this is kind of clear to give you an idea. So let's go ahead and let's go to the code and see how this is done using um, React. Okay, so here is our little app that we did earlier. That you update gives the random, random number and it updates the state. Let's go to the code and see how this is done. So this is the index here. I uh, code inside the demo folder with the app JS file. I'm gonna open that up here, and this is the one we had earlier. It's a function component. We, uh, I mean class component. We we convert it to a class component, 
has a prop called state uh, with a point property and we have a function uh, to update we have to bind the function remember to bind it if you update the state you have to bind the function otherwise it won't work and then down here in the render function we return a view a view just have basically the point and then a button to update this point okay so now to make this see the props and state work and how they update I'm going to modify this and add a child component to this component here so I'm going to go down here so basically I'm going to just convert this whole thing to a child component so let's do it down below at the bottom here um, so I'm going to call this I'll use a function component as a child component so I'll call it um, uh, child update and to receive the props you have to put the props in the receiving uh, um, variable here okay if you don't do it then it won't work because you can access it and the props will be passed down to this object and then inside here I just basically copy the return statement the whole thing copy it and paste it right into this function here and that's our child component and it, in its place inside the return all this div here will be replaced with this child component called child update like that okay so now I'm gonna pass this data the point and the uh, other information on this function here to the child component through its tag so you notice I have a function up here in the class let me just kind of move this a little bit here and then this update state probably to uh, pass it down to the child as well so you pass it by setting a like an attribute in HTML if you notice down here like the div tag has a style attribute this span has ID unclick right same idea so you just put it right to the child component here the child update here so once you do that then it automatically attaches to the props object you, you set down here okay and um, so the first one I want to pass to is uh, the point so I'm going to call a variable called the same name point and I'm going to assign that equal to and again this is what I mentioned in this slide that I have to put curly braces here because I'm inside the view right and the template if it do outside here like I did notice I did not put um, you know curly braces here around here right okay so only here because it needs to be uh, interpolated so this state dot point I set point to that object and let me close this give it some room the next one I just put a space okay don't put a comma it doesn't work just put a space just like HTML another attribute for example the next one here is uh, the function update me I could use the same update me if I want to or I can call it just update for short it doesn't matter it's just a variable you want to call it and then just to make sure you pass so you pass the right function so in this case update me a again I have to use this because it's a it's a class right and I'm gonna pass one more uh, variable and I just make it one right in here it's a local variable call that I call it the message is um, please update me something like that and then I'm gonna pass this update me message to a variable called MSG for short and this time I don't have to put uh, this Right, it's just message because it's in the local uh, um, local function here. If it is out in the class, then I have to put this message here. Right, that or you can also put you know just string literals. If you don't wish, if you don't want to, you could just do this. You know, put a message, and that's fine too because I'm using a variable outside of the um, return function. That's why I put it that curly braces. So that's just how it works. Okay, so when I has three properties to the props um, object so down here in the child component this is a function function does not have access to this and that's not have the state either it's so these are now no longer valid so I'll replace both of these with the props and the props now have access to the point update and message MSG so props.point is this guy right here and it's this guy points to way up here is on a, in this case just 10 okay so it points to that then the update function 
I call it update. It's no longer update me anymore because I changed it. So this is just update. And again, it's changed to just props. And then update me. This message here, I put on the button. So I'm going to replace that with the message I passed to an MSG. So, M, so props msg okay so there you have it this is a child component receives some data properties from the parent component and again this property is it's only readable you cannot change it you cannot add other, other properties to it whatever you receive that's all you get okay I cannot suddenly say oh I want to add another one called points dot total you can do that in regular JavaScript but in react it doesn't work so let's save this and let's go back to the view and see if, if it still works. So you can see it already updated that for me, right? It's it updated me. If I click on it, you can see that it still works just like before. Okay, if you do the F12 and you can see that well we printed some lit data earlier, but you can see that it works just like that. And if I go and click on the components here to kind of show you, so you see I have the parent, the app component, and then the child update component. Okay, so it actually so it, it does uh, its job. Now, how do we really know it really works? Well, it, that's kind of easy, right? You can put some flags in there to kind of show you the direction of flow of data. So let's go and do that really quick. So here, I'm going to go and um, up here in the constructor when I instantiate this object, this class uh, app. It happens behind the behind the scene, by the way. Uh, I'm going to put a message here. Um, and also, this props here, super here is a rule, right? It must be the first statement in the constructor. I cannot put some other data here, like console log. Okay, it won't work. Okay, it has to be the first, uh, I believe it has to be the first statement there. So let's just say that I'm going to put a message in here just to show you the direction of, of flow of uh, 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 code flow log I put here a, a message to say uh, parent constructor so so I know it's in that constructor I'm going to copy this and we'll put one inside the, the update me um, put right below here I'm going to just remove this one for now I don't need it and I put here the parent um, update me function okay and then here the render, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we don't have to put it. We know for sure it, it's working already. But you can put a function if you want a message to um, just to render and then go down here. And then go to the child component. So in here, it's going to put a message in the space here. Just say child, um, uh, child update. Update. Okay. So let's save this and let's go to the view. And as you can see, it's already did something here already. I'm going to clear the console and then refresh the very first time. As you can see, it updates the calls the constructor and then it calls the child component and it shows the data. When I click on it, so you can see the whole thing up. Uh, it, it calls and now it calls the update function and the parent constructor. I'm um, here in class, and then it updates the child, up, child uh, component, right? And it repeats that because you can see that the flow data flows in that direction. One last thing I want to show you before we close this video is this is how we pass data from a function, I mean, a class constructor to a function constructor, I mean, a uh, component, I'm sorry. Uh, so that just changes to a class. And let's see how this works. So, class. So it's kind of same idea, right? Extends the uh, React that component, and then the props will be inside here. Okay. So if you don't, so this this doesn't work anymore because um, it's in the class space now. You cannot put that like that to put a message like this in the class space. You have to do something like let you know m equals something like that, and then it will call that. But I mean, not let m just m equals to something like that. It will invoke that. But I'm gonna. So, um, and then the return statement down here, it, you cannot just do return, same rule up here. You have to call render, right? So render function, and then you put the return inside the curly brace of the render function. 
and then now the props is no longer just props it won't work okay if I save this if I go to the view and you see that it, um, it just say prop is not defined okay because now you're using class when you use class you have to access it through this dot props okay so add that in front this dot props and this dot props and save it and if you go back to the browser you see that it goes comes back again if I refresh it again it should work just like before whoops just like before okay if I click on it okay it's the same uh, information except the message is not shown because I did not put it in the um, render here okay so you may wonder so where is the props I did not include it here okay well if you don't use a constructor then it's going to call the parent constructor wherever this is in this case in the react component constructor and it go up the chain and there's a, um, a lot of interfaces and the constructor will have the, the props and it, it has that automatically if you don't have your own constructor but if you do have your constructor then you must put it in here okay if you don't put it like that if you just leave it like this and and for the sake of this information I'm going to put it back inside the constructor doesn't make sense to put out here uh, chop date constructor and then it just went one time in this case and to see the actual data we put it in here so we can say uh, child update uh, render so we see okay so if I save that and go to the browser and you see a bunch of errors it says must call the super constructor in the derived class the derived class is a child class before accessing this and so on so you have to do that it's required so that means here I just put props in here and then I have to pass it props because whatever is coming from the other child other parent component pass that to the super okay so this is required and this should be the first line inside your constructor and then after that you know you can add some states in here just like the uh, the parent thing here again whoever creates this state we owns that one so this app owns this state if I have another one in the child component then this child update owns that state okay and so now um, if I save it and go back to the browser everything should working just normally as before let me clear the console here and refresh it okay so we load the parent constructor the child constructor and the child render and update the parent update and then the child render okay and, and it keeps doing that and uh, so that's how it works